Let's get started. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this uh, music webinar. My name is Marin. I'm client success manager here at music. I hope you can all hear me clearly. Uh, if you do not, if you cannot hear me, please uh, tell me in uh, the question and answer or in the chat. And, but I think it should be okay. Uh, so I'm really happy to be giving this webinar today. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, just so you know, we will record this webinar. Well, we are recording this webinar and it will be made available on our brand new support website that is accessible at support.music.com. That's support at music.com. And there's a webinar section where you can find past recordings of our webinars uh, because this will be the first of many. Well, it's not actually the first webinar we do. We uh, ran a few webinars during the start of lockdown and all of this uh, COVID craziness. But now we're starting a new series where we'll have a regular webinars um, on different topics. So um, if you have any questions during this session, please ask them in the Q&A, uh, Q sorry, the question and answer section of your Zoom. Uh, please do not ask them in the chat because I will not see them there. Um, or it'll be harder for me to see them there. So if you could, could all please ask your questions in the Q&A section. Uh, that being said, please ask as many questions as you uh, want. This is, uh, the, the goal of this is that I can answer your questions live. So if you have anything you don't understand, if you think um, I'm speaking too fast or too slow, do let me know when I will adjust uh, my speed accordingly. Okay, and Okay, let's let's get started. So what we'll cover today, uh, we'll cover the very basics of music. So that for those who've been using music for a while already, you might uh, find some of the stuff redundant, but it's always good to have a reminder, uh, especially since I will be talking about some of the latest features we added uh, in the app. So we'll cover uh, the very basics of music, starting from how to import material into music, because the first time you open music, it will be empty. So I'll show you how to uh, get scores in there. And, um, and then we'll talk about um, the score itself, the sheet music in music. How do you view it? How do you turn pages, um, etc.? How do you access the menus? And then we'll talk about the fun stuff, the annotation. So how to annotate your sheet music, what are the tools you can use? And this is where I'll be introducing uh, the new shapes and straight lines feature, which we're really excited about. And uh, to finish, we'll talk about the organization of your library. So maybe something a little more advanced. Uh, what are the different tabs in music? How do you organize your library to make it neat and to have your material easy to find? Um, how to use the collaborative features, and we'll talk about how to import media, ask media, add, sorry, media files to your sheet music uh, in order to use the full potential of the digital format. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, before we talk about all this, I just want to want to mention something that is quite important. Let me share my iPad screen. The important thing is that music is a cloud-based app. Let's see. I hope you can all see my screen okay. Let me know if not. Uh, I'll try to make it a bit bigger, maybe in landscape mode. Here we go. So, music is a cloud-based app, and uh, this is one of our main particularities um, so for this app. Everything you do, as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi, is saved in our cloud. So, we have our own cloud. It's not iCloud or a OneDrive or, or, or something like that. It is our own server somewhere in the world. We cannot access it, of course. We cannot access your content or your material, but this allows us to store your data in a secure way so that you can retrieve it on uh, another device. For example, if you have uh, several devices or if um, you want to buy a new iPad, if you break your iPads, if it falls and you want to retrieval of your music library, this is possible. So you do not lose all of your edits, etc. So this is really handy. Um, and this happens, of course, only if you are connected to the Wi-Fi. It's still fine to work offline on music. You can always use it if you're not connected to the internet. But it's a good thing to connect to the internet once in a while uh, with the app so that everything is backed up on the cloud. 
Uh, what this allows as well is to use our brand new platform, which is actually at the moment in a beta version, but you will very soon be able to use a platform called Music Web, where you'll be able to retrieve all your content um, on a web platform. And this is made possible by this cloud synchronization. So you'll be able to find all of the contents of your music library on um, any device um, as long as it's connected to the internet. To check the status of your synchronization, the synchronization of your account, you can check out this uh, little logo here, cloud pictogram in the bottom right corner. I hope you can see it. Let me try and get something to highlight it. Here we go. Nope. Uh, here we go. Yep, this here. So as you can see here, this cloud icon has a little green tick mark, which means that my account has been fully synced up um, in the cloud, so I can uh, log out, I can find all of my content on another device. Uh, if it is um, grayed out, it means you are not connected to the internet. That's all right, again, it's just remember to do it once in a while. And if it's uh, loading, it just means that it's in the process of syncing up your data. Okay, so this is uh, the cloud synchronization process. Um, now, let's just talk a little bit about the difference between music free and music premium very quickly. So the first time you download music, you can download it for free on the App Store, of course. And then you'll create an account. And at first, your account will be a free account. It's a trial version. It will be limited to the import of 15 files. So you will not be able to import more than 15 files. It's just so you can try out the app. And you will not have access to projects either. Uh, projects is another uh, feature of music that is uh, really cool and is making use of this uh, cloud-based um, process. And it's a collaborative mode. So it's, think of it like the Google Drive of sheet music. Okay, It's like when you can share a folder of sheet music with other music users. And this way, you can share Boeing, share scores very easily in almost real time. So that's really cool. And you do not have access to that if you don't have the premium version of music, which uh, you can subscribe to uh, from within the app. You will be prompted to do so if you have uh, the free version. So now let's talk about importing scores into music. So uh, the music app is divided into five tabs. Okay, you have the home, the library, the import, oh, sorry, the import, the set list, and the project. So right now what we'll look about is what we'll look at, sorry, is the import, which is the middle tab. And this is where you'll be able to import materials into your library, because the first time you open music, it will be empty, okay? Uh, we are not a, a music publisher, we do not sell scores, but um, you, you will be able to add your own score to it. For this, you have several choices, several options. Yeah, the first section here is build your music library. Okay, so this is where you'll be able to scan uh, music, so scan paper music, I'll show you how to do that, and uh, to import from your drives and from your photo library. Or you can use this. If it's the first time you use music, I advise you to check out these collections here. These are quite new. Um, we put them into the app so you can try out, um, try out music with free scores. So if you click on one of these, you'll be able to browse through our free collection, and some of them have MIDI files or audio files attached, so you can listen to the music as well. And this is always accessible uh, in music. And then you can also buy from my partner, our partner publishers here, uh, Carl Fisher, Theodore Presser, Universal Edition, Virtual Sheet Music and Donimus. So if you click on one of those, it'll open the website of these publishers and you'll be able to buy scores that arrive then directly into music. And then finally, you can use templates if you want to jot down some musical ideas or, or write some notes, then uh, you'll use these. But you know, music is not a score editor. It's it's a music, a sheet music reading service. So, um, so here we go. Um, so we have a question here from Donna that's saying that her trial is over and she cannot access new trial. Yeah, that's true. If you've gone over the 15 import limit, then you will not be able to go back. Uh, if you want to try again, if you're not sure about, you know, um, purchasing the uh, subscription, which is very cheap, by the way, but if you're not sure, um, then what you can do is delete the app and download it again, and you'll be able to, to try again uh, to have a new trial version. 
And uh, Laurie, uh, yes, the free scores do count against your 15 imports in the trial version. So if you download one of these, you'll see that you'll always have an indication. Um, well, I mean, if you, if you download one of these, it will count against your import uh, credit. Okay, so uh, let's see how to import from Google Drive, for example. So the typical case is you will have some digital sheet music on your computer, on your laptop, and you want to import that onto your iPad or iPhone to use it in music. So how do you do that? Uh, one of the simplest ways, and what I advise you to do is to use Google Drive. So Google Drive is a well-known file sharing service by Google. It is free. You also have a paid version, but the free version is more than enough. And you can use that to transfer files from your laptop to your iPad or iPhone. So how to do this? So on my laptop, I created my Google Drive account. It's very easy. It's very fast. Um, and it, 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 it really takes two minutes and it's free. And then I can add my PDF scores or my music XML scores on the Google Drive. I'll talk about these two different formats in a minute. And then from music, what I, I have to do is just click on Google Drive here. If I choose Google Drive as my import option, or you can use Dropbox if that's what you're familiar with. But here I'll use Google Drive. And then you'll connect, of course, with a password and your account to your Google Drive account. And then you can just navigate as you would uh, on, um, on your normal Google Drive account. You can navigate through your account, through your library, and find, for example, here I'll go through Sheet Music. And these are all uh, PDFs. And these are my scores that I want to import into, into uh, music. So what I'll do now is I'll just click on them to select them. And you can see these arrows here on the right side that are downloading my material as I click on it, okay? What I'm gonna do now is gonna select all of that. I'm gonna click on select all. It's gonna download all uh, of these files very quickly. Just have to click on next. And here I have a very important question that the app asks me, okay? Do these files belong to the same keys? So what does that mean? It means that if you say yes, then all of these files, all of these PDF files will become one in a single piece. It doesn't mean that they will be one after the other. It will mean that it will, they, they will all be accessible from the same piece. I'll show you in a second what, what I mean by that, because uh, it's quite important. In music, one piece, what we call a piece, can contain several files. And I'll show you. This is especially useful if you have several individual parts for the same piece. Here we're talking about the classical, uh, an opera piece with different uh, individual parts. We have the clarinet, the bassoon, uh, the, the, the strings, etc., that are all in separate files. So I'm going to say, yes, these files belong to the same piece, and you'll see what, what happens. If I said no, then one piece would be created for each and every one of those uh, files that are selected. But here I'll say yes. And then I have this window that pops up that will pop up every time you import new material into music, where you can just rename your piece. You can add the composer information. So in this case, it is Bizet, of course. And I'll click on done. And now, as you can see, the music is imported in my music library. And what I was saying earlier about different individual parts of different files belonging to the same piece, I'll show you this in more detail, detail uh, in, a, in a couple minutes, but see here, I have all of my PDF files belonging to the same piece in this drop down list and I can access them all from here. This is one sub level of organization in music that prevents you from having a very long library even if you have different files belonging to the same piece. It's, a, it's just like a, a folder, if you like. So the thing to remember here is in music, one piece can actually be a folder of different individual parts of different files. Okay. Um, and so this is one way to import. You can also import from your Dropbox, if you have a Dropbox account rather than a Google Drive account, or you can import from files. And files is the native file sharing service of Apple. So if you have an iPad or an iPhone, you will already have an iCloud account that you can access from files, okay? Also, if you have files on your iPad, if you have um, 
some scores already on your iPad, but not in music, you will be able to import them in music from this place here. Okay, and it's just the same process. You'll select uh, your files and then you'll uh, rename them, etc., and they will be imported into your account. It's very easy. Uh, we've recently added the possibility of um, importing from your photo library. So if you, if you have photos of scores, you can import that into music as well. Now, the last thing I want to show you for the import, it's my favorite bit and probably the most convenient when you have a big paper music library and you want to convert that to a digital music library. And this is, of course, our scanner feature. So the scanner feature uses the camera of the iPad to scan paper and import it directly into music as a digital score. So how does it work? Well, you have to just have to click on scanner here and it will open your iPad or iPhone's camera. In this case, I'm using an iPad, but it works just as well with uh, an iPhone. And then, so I've got a paper score here and I'm gonna scan it into music so that it becomes a digital score that I can work on in music. So all I have to do is hover over the, over the score like that. You can choose between automatic or manual uh, mode. It doesn't change much, you know, and then just click on uh, the shutter release button. And for now, all this is is a picture. But then if you adjust the corners using dragging this, these handles here, just adjust the corner to match the size, the size of the page. And then the iPad will compute everything and, and make it straight. It's going to straighten it. And it's going to look like an actual, you know, like a beautiful digital score. It's not just a picture, it's an actual scan now. Okay, then you can retake you know, you can take this second page if you want, you know, you can continue doing that. Then you can adjust the corners again. Um, it, it does it automatically, but depending on the contrast and the lightning, the lightning in your room, etc., it might, uh, it might change. And then you click on keep scan. Then you just have to click on save here in the bottom, uh, just here in the bottom right corner. And then it's the same thing. It's creating the PDF and you can name it however you want, add the composure information and click on done. And now it will appear in music. Okay, so this is how you import files into music. I hope that was clear. Uh, we have a question from uh, Suzanne who's asking us if we can import directly from Finale. Uh, not really. What you will have to do first is export your Finale scores into PDF or into music XML, which brings me to my next point. So in music, you can, you can have several score formats, several, several sheet music formats. So this is, and the most common one is the PDF. This is the closest thing there is to paper. Okay, it's this, um, this score here is just normal pages. Uh, you, it's divided by page and you can turn the pages, etc. But the other mode, and uh, we're one of the few sheet music reading apps to offer this is you can also use the music XML format, which is basically a dynamic score format. So look at this, for example, or again, this one. Okay, this is music XML. You can see it looks a bit different. And if you zoom in on that, like pay attention when I release it, can you see that the score automatically fits to, this, to the screen? Okay, this is what we call liquid mode. And this is what you get with music XML. It's a, it's a dynamic format. The other thing you can do with that is also transpose on the spot. So see, if, I mean, F, if I want to go to E or to E flat, you know, I can just turn this transposition wheel here and it will transpose my music. So music XML, it's a dynamic format. It's a bit more difficult to get, of course, you know, there's many more, um, PDF scores available at Music XML, but you can find some online. And if you use Finale, for example, you can export your music as Music XML, and then you'll be able to import it into music. The process is the same, and you'll be able to benefit from all of these extra features of dynamic scores. Okay, so now let's go on to the, the actual uh, sheet music in the app. What does it look like and how do you use it? So let's open this uh, piano concerto. So what you need to understand in music is that the screen is always divided in three, okay? 
So let me show you with the annotation palette that I'll show you later. So you've got actually three thirds, number one, number two, and number three. So the central third uh, here in the middle is what you use uh, to make the menu bars appear. Okay, so for this, just press once anywhere in the middle, in the middle tier of the screen. As you can see, I have these menu bars that appear at the top and at the bottom, and this is what you'll use um, for all of the extra features you can add to your scores. We're not going to go through them today because we don't have time, uh, but I encourage you to, to uh, have a look at that. This is where you'll get your bookmarks, your cropping uh, options, your rearrange functions, etc. So, and for this, again, all you have to do is click in the middle here. This is also how you close a score. To close a, a piece, oh, click once in the middle to make the menu bars appear, and then click on the cross in the top left corner here. And then the left and right um, thirds of the page, of course, are for turning pages, okay? So for this, you just press once on either of those sides and it will turn the pages forwards or backwards. You know, I see a lot of people swiping uh, with their iPad. You can do that as well to turn pages. You can swipe on the screen, it works as well. But personally, I prefer just tapping. I think it's just more reliable and it's just faster to do that if you're playing. Uh, you know, you need to turn pages as fast as possible. So just tapping once, I think, is faster. And another thing you can do is use a Bluetooth pedal, of course. You know, if you connect a Bluetooth pedal such as this one, this is an Arig Blue Turn. Uh, we use these a lot at Music. Um, you can use that to turn your pages. All you have to do is connect it uh, via Bluetooth to your device, and then you'll be able to turn pages in Music with your uh, feet using these buttons here. Very convenient if you need to uh, perform with your digital score. I have a very interesting question, two interesting questions from Dona and Luja asking us if it's possible to transpose scans or to convert a PDF into a music XML. This is not yet possible. It's not something you can do. There are some options to do this online. I'll let you search for it yourself. Um, there are some paying options, unfortunately, on the internet to do this. However, they're not very reliable. So for now, there's no, no convincing solution to do that, unfortunately. Okay, now let's look at the fun stuff. Let's have a look at annotations. So um, if you have an Apple Pencil, this, is, this will be your best friend to annotate music, to mark up your music in this app. It's a very comfortable tool to use, but if you do not have it, it's fine. You can still annotate with your fingers. Uh, it's, uh, it's very easy as well. So I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing we want to do if we want to annotate our music is we're going to have to open the annotation toolbar. The annotation toolbar is a, a set of tools uh, that you will use to mark up your music. To open it, if you do not have an Apple Pencil, there's a shortcut. Simply touch anywhere on the screen with two fingers at a time. See, and now can you see at the top of my screen, this is the annotation toolbar. Okay, to close it, I'm just going to click on Done in the top right corner. This is how you open the annotation toolbar with your fingers. If you do have an Apple Pencil, if you're lucky enough to have one of these beautiful things, then just click anywhere on your screen once with the Apple Pencil. And as you can see, it opens the annotation toolbar. So you can annotate either with your fingers or with your pencil. Uh, in this demo, I will annotate with the pencil because it's more comfortable, but you can do everything that I'm doing here. You can do it with your fingers as well. So, in this annotation toolbar, you have a wide set of tools. The first thing you have, and the, the, probably the thing you'll use the most, is the pens, okay? All of these little colored circles here are your pencils or your pens um, that you use to annotate your music. So, for example, here, I select, I've selected the red pen by clicking on it, okay? You can just select the pen by clicking on it, and you can see uh, it might be a bit small on your screen, but can you see here this little orange mark? This is where you, uh, that, that tells you which uh, pencil you've selected. And then one, once you've selected the pencil, you can just write on your score, right? And you can annotate like that, just like on normal paper. 
And the great thing we've added re very recently, a couple of weeks ago in our new version, is the straight lines feature. So it used not to be possible to draw straight lines in music, but now it is. All you have to do is when you write, is if you stay pressed at the beginning of your stroke and then draw, you can see that this is a straight line. So it's going to be very useful if you want to divide your bars, for example, or to cross out a whole page, you can do that. You can do this or the other thing, if you want to draw a shape rather, like a crescendo, you can stay pressed at the end of the stroke. So let's see here, I'm going to add a crescendo. And if I stay pressed at the end, you can see that it becomes a straight crescendo. So it's much neater, much better um, for, for uh, my music. So this is for the pens. You can edit, you can add as many pens as you want by clicking on the little plus here. You can change the color, the size and the opacity. The opacity will be useful to create highlighters. So see if I choose a yellow pen, opacity of less than 40% and quite a big size, this will be a highlighter and I can highlight my music like that. And straight lines work with highlighters as well. The next thing you have are symbols. Uh, symbols, uh, they are called stamps in some other apps, but basically what they are is, is a pre-made pre symbols that you can add to your score. So um, you just click on this symbol here, the sharp and the flat right here. And if you click on that, it opens the symbols panel and you can swipe through. There's quite a, quite a lot of them. Uh, it should cover basically all of your needs. If it doesn't, let us know. And uh, let's say, let's use the glasses, for example. It's, uh, everyone's favorite is the glasses, I'm not sure why. But so to select a symbol, I'm just going to click on it. Then I can select the color and its size. And then I click once outside of the panel to close it. And then every time I click on my score, I'm going to place these glasses or this symbol wherever I want. If you want to place them more precisely, if you stay pressed when you place them on your score, Oh, sorry, I have the wrong thing selected. Here we go. If you stay pressed, then you get this little magnifying glass here. Uh, it's very useful for uh, sharps, accidentals, you know, uh, sharps and flats. You can place them very uh, precisely on your score. Okay, so that's it for symbols. And then the next thing uh, you can use is the text annotations, if you like to, to use that. So this is the T here. Click on the T to select the tool and then click anywhere on the score and you'll see your keyboard pop up. And then you can just write whatever you need to write. You can change the color. Uh, you can make it bigger if you want to. And then you can move that anywhere in your score. To erase annotations, you'll use the eraser, of course, which is the next tool in the palette. It's in the annotation toolbar. So it's this one here, the eraser, if you select that, as, long, as soon as you click on a stroke, it will delete it or an annotation, right? It's not like a physical eraser. It doesn't erase pixel by pixel. It erases the whole thing, okay? So it's great for erasing stuff very fast. If I want to uh, erase all of this, I'm just, I just have to touch them like this very quickly and everything disappears, okay? To, to uh, erase annotations, you can also use the trash here, but be careful with that one because it deletes all of the annotations at once. Um, so, you know, use it wisely. And then the very last tool in this bar, in this toolbar, the very last annotation tool is the lasso tool. This one on the very far right. This is what you'll use to select, copy and paste, etc. So you have two kinds of selection tool, the square selection tool or the lasso. I use the lasso, I think it's more convenient. And then if you just, you know, circle what you need to, to select and then you can move it around, you can make it bigger or smaller, you know, you can rotate it. And using these symbols here, you can copy and paste, you can cut and paste, or you can delete it. You know, so I'll just show you copy and paste right now. So I'm just going to click on that symbol. It's copied in my clipboard. And when, whenever I click on the score, on that score now, I can paste it wherever I want. Okay. And I'm going to delete everything using the trash icon. And that's it. Easy, right? So these are all of your annotation tools in, in music. Uh, there's another thing, it's a bit more advanced, so perhaps not that uh, suited to this webinar, but I'll show you because it is something not many people know about, it's the layers. So see if you click here on the, on the left side of the bar, you have annotation layers that you can use 
um, to separate different kinds of annotations on different layers can be really useful to um, separate your personal layer, personal annotations from uh, those of your teacher, for example, or, or separate for different um, different seasons. If you're a professional musician, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can use these layers for. Okay, and once you've done annotating your music, you can click on done here in the top right corner, and this will, will this will close the annotation toolbar, and then you'll be allowed. Uh, you'll be able to uh, use all of the features of music. Okay. So now um, I'll answer a couple of questions and then we'll talk about organizing uh, the library in music, organizing our scores and sheet music. So um, we have a question from Donna asking us if I can rec recommend a pedal for turning pages. Well, Donna, there's actually an article on uh, the music blog an article that I wrote in a video um, comparing all of the different main models, well, basically all of the different pedal models available on the market. And if you if you have a look at that article, you can find it on music.com slash blog, okay, music.com slash blog. And um, it's called the best page turners in 2020 or something like that. And uh, there's a lot of information on that. Um, I personally use the Arig Blue Turn, uh, Arig Blue Turn, that's I-R-I-G, um, it's it just because it's very reliable and, and pretty light, pretty compact. So it's great to travel with. Um, so that's what I use, but um, there's many different models with uh, different features. And again, on a music blog, you'll learn everything you need to know about that. And uh, Ludger asks us if we can annotate other formats uh, or only the PDF. Uh, sheet music. That's a very good question. You can actually also annotate music XML. Uh, so no, this is not music XML. This is so I can annotate this as well. Okay. The only thing is once you annotate music XML, you will lose the uh, dynamic format feature. So now if I do that, if I zoom in and out, it is like a PDF, you know, I, it, it doesn't adapt to the screen anymore, but I can still transpose, etc. Okay, so you can do that. Okay, uh, I see a question in, in the uh, chat. Please, if you have questions, please ask them in the Q&A. Just makes it a lot easier for me to uh, follow up with, with all of your questions. Thank you. Okay, now let's talk about the organization of the library in music because uh, with time, you know, you're going to have a very big library with probably uh, dozens or even hundreds of scores. And so you will want to organize that in the best way possible so you don't spend hours uh, retrieving what you need to play every time. So I'll show you the different levels of organization in the music app. We talked about this earlier, um, but I said before that a piece in music, so the, what I call a piece is, is one of those, right? One of these titles, I call them a piece. And a piece contains can contain several parts. Okay, you've got the piece and the parts. So here, this piano concerto, for example, uh, let's say this is the clarinet part, but I play the violin. Then I will want to find the violin part. And how do I do that? Then I'll click in the middle of the score to open the menu bars, like I showed you earlier. And you can see here at the top of the screen, this is the name of the current part. If I click on that, this is actually a drop down list. And I have access to the other parts. That is, of course, if the piece that you have contains these parts, right? You have to import them yourself. Um, but here I can select, for example, the violin one score, and here we go. So this is the first level of organization in music. It's parts within a piece. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, then if I close this piece, now I have several things. I have the library, the set list, and the projects. The library is where all of your pieces will be, okay? They will all be located here. All of the pieces that are in your account will be here in the library. At first, you might use the library a lot, but you'll see as your library grows and you've got, you've got more and more pieces, you will want to organize them in folders, okay? Just like we do with all of our files on our laptops and on our phones, etc. So for this, we'll use the set list. They're called set lists and not folders because this is what they were initially intended for. 
and this is what many people still use them for for concert programs right because set lists are basically custom folders of pieces and you can add the pieces to them and then organize them and sort them in the order you like so it's very handy for concerts um well to create set lists basically so i'll show you what it looks like here i've got one set list here called demo for this this webinar and i have regrouped okay a uh, many pieces from my library into my set list and i'll show you how to do that and this make it makes it a lot more convenient to find what i'm looking for so there's several ways to add pieces to a set list but the easiest one if you're in a, if you're in your library what you're going to do is click on edit in the top right corner here i'll put my ipad in landscape mode so you see a bit better so i'll click on edit in the top right corner right here right here so edit and then you can see there's some um some uh, tick cases here that i can choose so i can tick those to select the pieces i want to add to my set list once i've selected what what i wanted to select i click on add to set list in the top left corner here you see that add to set list then i can create a set list give a name to this set list um, let's say for example tomorrow's concert uh, i wish there could be a, a concert tomorrow but in uh, the current context is not possible unfortunately but let's say tomorrow's concert click on okay then you just click on done and now as you can see my pieces were added to this set list called tomorrow's concert inside this set list i can click on edit in the top right corner and then use these handles here to drag my pieces in the order i want okay so this is great for concerts etc concert programs to prepare your set lists once you're done you just click on done and and that's it uh, one thing you need to understand is when you add a piece from your library to a set list you do not duplicate the piece right it's the same piece just accessible from two different places and this is very useful if um for example, you have the same piece in different set lists. You can, you can do that. You can have one piece in several set lists. And uh, then if you mark up one of these pieces, these annotations will be replicated on all of the other pieces. Okay, of course, because if you want to play the same piece in different concerts, uh, you will want your markings to be the same, right? So um, this is the set list, the second level of organization. Okay, we had the piece, the parts within a piece, the pieces inside the library and then we can group the pieces together in what we call set lists and the last thing the last level we have is the projects so that's a bit of a weird name project doesn't sound very musical but what it is essentially um, it used to be called collaborative set lists okay but it was a bit too long so we decided to cut it uh, and to call it projects because it's it's when you work together on the project and so essentially projects are the same thing as set lists. So a group of pieces, a folder of pieces, but the difference and the very important difference is that um, all of the pieces inside a project are shared. They can be shared with all of the members of that project. And this is super useful to share music very fast, to share annotations. If you're a teacher teaching to a class where you can share annotations in real time, etc I'm, I'm not going to be able to talk too much about this right now because we just don't have time uh, but um, we'll probably do a webinar just on that topic and if you want more info I'll, I'll give you a link at the end so you can you can know more about this but basically the process to add pieces to a project is exactly the same I'm in the library I'm going to click on edit in the top right corner select my pieces and this time I'm going to click on copy to project here and not add to set list I'm going to copy to a project, name my project, um, project one, click on OK, click on done, and same thing happens. You know, my, my uh, pieces are added to my project. The one difference here is that um, the pieces here will be copied. Okay, because projects are shared, like a shared space, uh, you don't want the pieces inside that project to be the same ones as the ones in your library okay so contrary to set lists when you add a piece from your library to a project it will create a duplicate of that piece a copy of that piece that will be independent from the original one i hope this is clear 
Uh, Deborah asks us if to share a project, we need to have subscribed to music. So yes, you can only share a project with other music premium users, okay? Projects are only accessible to people who have subscribed to music premium. Um, and, and yeah, there's many, many things you can do with projects and you can see actually, you can display. See if I click here, I can see all the people that are members of my project and I can share it with more people here. Okay, and then we can collaborate together. I mean, imagine a whole class, for example, collaborating on the same scores and everyone can have their own annotation layers and, and share stuff like that. This is a bit of a bit more advanced use, but it's good to know that it exists. Okay, so that's it for the organization in, in music. Um, now I'll show you, so as a final, final tool in music, I'll show you how to add media files to your pieces. So, um, of course, you know, the, the good thing about digital scores compared to a paper scores is that you can use, you know, other resources on top of just the music. So let me open, for example, this, um, the Carmen piece that I, I imported earlier, right? So I have Carmen here, but I want, uh, let's say I want to share it with my students and I want them to be able to listen to recording of the piece. What I'll do is click in the middle to make the menu bars appear. And then the media panel, so everything that has to do with media files, so videos or, um, or MP3s or uh, whatever kind of format, you can find it here. So I click here on the media icon and then I can record myself using this, this recording button or I can click on the plus here and this will open the import menu that you are, you're already familiar with. So you can import from your files, from your Google Drive or your Dropbox or directly from YouTube, okay? You can add, you can search for videos and add them directly from YouTube. What I'll do now is go to Google Drive. I'm gonna go find uh, an MP3 right here. It's the same process. I click on it, it's gonna be downloaded. I click on done. And now, as you can see, there's a play bar now here at the bottom and I can play, um, I can play the recording. And I'm not sure if you can, hear it on your side it's the famous air from Carmen right and then there's many more uh, functionalities with this you can actually synchronize this recording with page turns so that the page turn uh, the pages turn automatically okay there's a lot of stuff you can do with it I'm not going to go into details here uh, but I encourage you to try all that out okay uh, let's see if there's any unanswered questions here Okay, Janie is asking us how to acquire some music XML. Um, there's, there are many databases online where you can find music XML. Um, if you just type the name of a piece on, in Google and then music XML, you should be able to find it. Okay, well, uh, that's the end of our webinar on the basics of music. I hope you found it useful and uh, I hope you've got, uh, I, I hope I was clear and, and not, not too fast. Actually, once you leave this webinar, there'll be a little poll that will open in your browser, a little survey. And I'll be very happy if you could, um, if you could fill that out. It's very quick and it's anonymous. Um, and all that it um, helps me with, it, it tells me how, how well I did basically. You know, we're gonna run a series of this and I wanna know if the format is to your liking, if it's too short, too fast, if I'm going too slow or too fast, etc. So if you could just um, fill that out, I'd be, uh, extremely grateful. And additional piece of information, there is a support website where you can find a lot of documentation on the app and on uh, all of these functionalities that I talked about today and even more. And this is at support.music.com. Okay, support.music.com. And if you still have questions after reading through all of these articles, um, you can send me an email at contact at music.com. Okay, contact at music.com. If you send an email there, I'll get it and I'll reply to you. Um, I usually reply uh, pretty fast, usually in the hour or a couple of hours after you send it. And I'll be able to help you with uh, any questions. Same if I didn't answer some of your questions today, I'm sorry about that. I couldn't really answer all of them, um, but just, um, just send it to me and I'll be able to answer. One final question, Donna is asking if we need a pedal to turn pages. No, it's a bonus. You can turn pages with your fingers. But if you have a pedal, it's even better. 
Well, thank you very much for attending this webinar. I hope you liked it. And, and I hope to see you all in um, next webinars, you know, in the next ones we'll, uh, we'll make. We'll send you communications about this by email. And uh, well, thanks a lot and see you soon and stay safe. Bye-bye.